Welcome back everyone. This is going to be my new Doctor Strange 2 Marvel video. We have a new report about the main villain of the movie. It's a little bit different from what we've heard before, but I'll explain what's going on with that and how this all connects. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. There's a bunch of big stuff coming up. I'm doing Loki episodes in a couple weeks. We're doing a Marvel Disney Plus giveaway for memberships. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave all your predictions for Doctor Strange 2 Multiverse of Madness on the video. It is probably going to be the craziest Marvel movie in the best possible way. We also have some news about what's going on with Spider-Man 3 No Way Home and the new trailer that they're probably going to be releasing real soon. I'll mention that at the end of the video too because there is a connection between the events of Spider-Man No Way Home and Doctor Strange 2. But if you didn't see the news that was going around the internet this past week, according to the Illuminerd and a couple of the other big websites that were reporting this, the new main villain that they're using for Doctor Strange 2 is actually Shumagorth. It's not Nightmare as we previously believed. Previously, we had heard the director from the first Doctor Strange movie, Scott Derrickson, talking about how he wanted to use Nightmare, but then he left the movie, Sam Raimi, Mr. Spider-Man himself, came on to direct, and they did a big rewrite, so no big surprise that they would change the villain. But they also did report how he enters the story and what he's actually doing during the movie, what the stakes are and how he's connected to the other characters. He's one of Marvel's biggest villains metaphorically and literally, so we're slowly getting to higher level cosmic concepts like the Celestials and Eternity. Shumagorth, for instance, isn't a cosmic concept, but he is so ancient and powerful that he predates the Celestials and the birth of this version of the MCU universe. He was born before the Infinity Stones were created. As with a lot of the bigger Doctor Strange villains, he is an extra-dimensional being of immense power, and he belongs to this group of creatures that they refer to as the Many-Angled Ones. They're like the Elder Gods who ruled over Earth about 20,000 years ago. He was originally defeated by a sorcerer from the future from like the 30th century called Saizneg. I know we're getting into time travel with the Loki series, so that'll be really interesting to see in the MCU. But this sorcerer also went by the name Cagliostro, who you may remember from the first Doctor Strange movie because the Ancient One and Doctor Strange discussed the Book of Cagliostro, which was his grimoire with all of his most powerful spells. He went around trying to accumulate the sum total of all magical knowledge and put it in this book. This will be important in a second because we just saw Wanda reading from the Darkhold another different but very powerful grimoire of magic. The next time that you see Shumagorth in the comics, he's actually being defeated by a god called Chrome from the Conan comics. Conan was a Marvel character for a while. Using something called the Ironbound Books of Shumagorth, he imprisons him in these books. And the only way to release him is if someone uses the books, tries to use the magic that's in them. It's the exact same concept with Cthone in the Darkhold. Cthone is the one who created the Darkhold. He's the god of chaos. He's always trying to use the Darkhold as a means to break into the main MCU dimension, getting people to read from it. Since we're talking about Sam Raimi, he did the Evil Dead series, Army of Darkness. It's a little bit like reading from the Book of the Damned. Klaatu, Mirada, <laughs> Never a good idea to read from magical books if you don't know what's going on. Shumagorth is a very Lovecraftian style villain, like one of the Eldritch Horrors. If you're not familiar with H.P. Lovecraft, Eldritch just means otherworldly. But when the term is used in science fiction fantasy stories, it's usually just referring to some ancient dark god from outside our dimension. This will start to sound familiar. So Shumagorth rules over his own chaos dimension, which exists in the space between what you think of as the normal universes of the multiverse. Like if you think of each universe as being an infinite series of sphere-like shapes next to each other, the chaos dimension where Shumagorth and the many angled ones were born, where they rule over, is basically the dark nothingness between all those universes. For example, Dormammu rules over the dark dimension, and his goal is to go around absorbing other normal dimensions into his own, making it larger, but the dark dimension is still part of what you would consider the normal subset of universes of the multiverse. Shumagorth is sort of like Dormammu's boss, if we're talking about tier lists here. He's referred to as the Lord of Chaos, Master of the Old Ones, and Ruler of a Thousand Dimensions. Even though that sounds like a lot, there are infinite universes, infinite dimensions of the multiverse. But he's not the God of Chaos, like I said, that's Cthone. But the Old Ones are also another name for the Elder Gods. Cthone was one of the most powerful Elder Gods. And as I said, he is the one in the comics, at least, who wrote the book that you see Wanda reading from in WandaVision. But Shumagorath, Chaos Lord, is more powerful than Cthone. So this should all start to sound familiar. The MCU just got done canonizing how Scarlet Witch's chaos magic works in the Darkhold prophecy about her bringing about the end of the world. Scarlet Witch is also one of the main characters of Doctor Strange 2. 
So in the way that Marvel simplifies things and does sort of Cliff's Notes versions of really complicated comic book backstories, it sounds like they might be combining a lot of elements of different characters in the comics for their version of the Doctor Strange 2 villain. A really good example of this is what they did with Dormammu during the first Doctor Strange movie. They sort of combined his backstory with Doctor Strange with Shumagorath's backstory. In the comics, the first big fight that Doctor Strange had with the Shumagorath was actually when it tried to take over the mind of the Ancient One and use him, because it was a man in the comics, as a doorway back to Earth. Doctor Strange was forced to kill him in order to stop it from happening. So you can see the similarities in the plot of the first Doctor Strange movie, where the Ancient One is slowly corrupted by the use of dark magic, Dormammu's energy, threatening to allow him to enter and take over the main MCU dimension, until eventually she winds up dying. This will also sound familiar too. The next time Shumagorath tries to enter the main dimension was after Doctor Strange's magical barriers and protections were destroyed, similar to what's happened between Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame with the loss of the Infinity Stones like the Time Stone. That wasn't the only thing that Doctor Strange was using to keep Earth safe from beings like Dormammu, other extra-dimensional beings, but it was his trump card. It was the one thing that they were afraid of. So those other villains like Shumagorath are powerful enough to sense when the Infinity Stones were atomized by Thanos. They still exist in the MCU because without them, the flow of time would be completely corrupted. They'll be getting into that concept during the Loki series. But because they were atomized, nobody else can use them, villains or heroes. The only way to use the Infinity Stones again would be to time travel again and steal them from some earlier point in the timeline. But here's where we get into the plot of WandaVision in that WandaVision post credit scene and her reading from the Darkhold. So one of Sumagorth's biggest twists is trying to take over the minds of other people and use the Ironbound books of Shumagorth, or like Cthone with the Darkhold, use people that read the book to take over their minds and allow them to use their powers to enter the main MCU dimension. So in that post credit scene, you see Scarlet Witch reading from the Darkhold seemingly in a trance, like she's astral projecting and reading from the book in the astral plane. There's a bit of an implied time jump, so it seems like she's been doing this for a while, and the idea is that slowly as she reads more and more of the Darkhold, if they really are combining some of these Marvel villains, eventually he'll be able to take control of her mind and her body and use her chaos magic powers to bring him to Earth. Which gets back to that whole prophecy that Agatha Harkness was talking about, the prophecy that the Scarlet Witch would bring about the end of the world. I did a video about the deleted Doctor Strange scenes that they were supposed to have in WandaVision, but then changed their minds about at the last minute. He was going to show up by the finale and teach her about her magic. Even though it's a bummer we didn't see him cameo on the series, they can just turn that into some of the drama at the beginning of Doctor Strange 2, where Wanda is still pretty naive about how her powers work. Like Agatha Harkness warns her, you're going to need me for what's coming. And Wanda just kind of brushes it off like it's no big deal. Like, I'm not worried about that. She begins to read from the Darkhold, slowly her mind becomes corrupted and Shumagorath starts to take advantage of her. Then they explain that's why things really start to go off the rails. There is a connection between Agatha Harkness and Shumagorath in the comics. He actually fought a version of Nicholas Scratch, who is her son. We don't know if this version of Agatha Harkness from WandaVision had any children. She's hundreds of years old on the series, so I think they're just leaving the rest of her story in the MCU to whichever Marvel director wants to bring her character back again. But I do 100% think that she will come back in some future Marvel project. I do not believe that she's supposed to be in Doctor Strange 2, though. But according to this report from Illuminerd, Shumagorth's story in Doctor Strange 2 begins with him pursuing America Chavez, who's being played by Sashi Gomez, according to Kevin Feige here, because he wants to use her power to control the entire multiverse. So if you haven't read a lot about her character, America Chavez is a person who can open portals to any dimension that she wants to. She can also travel at near the speed of light. She was born in this special dimension outside the normal dimensional space in the presence of what they call the Demiurge, who is the force that created the Elder Gods like Cthone. So America Chavez is connected to Shumagorth. But after Shumagorth, the only cosmic villain that's bigger than him, if we're talking about escalation with sequels, if they do Doctor Strange 3, and they like doing trilogies, so I assume that at some point they'll try to do a third Doctor Strange movie, they're doing four Thor movies and four Captain America movies. But the only character who's actually bigger than him and more evil is the one below all, who's sort of the antithesis of the one above all, Marvel's version of the one true god of everything. Like there are lesser gods with a little g like Thor, Odin, Hela, then you have the actual god, who I'm actually never expecting to see in the live action movies. I don't think they're ever going to try doing that character. It would just completely break every story that they have. How do you have stakes when you have a character that's that powerful? 
there was a story that Marvel did recently about a war between the different demonic entities during the Doctor Strange Damnation series where Mephisto actually emerged victorious. I know, it all goes back to Mephisto. Everyone pull out your Mephisto theories. It was sort of a version of Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame, but just for the magical, demonic, cosmic entities. And it also involved Shumagorth. It could be a concept that they try to get into with their final Doctor Strange movie, whatever that winds up being in some future year. Even though I do think that the next real big concept that Marvel's building up to, their next big event, will be Galactus. But hopefully that explains who Shumagorth is and how he sort of fits into the grand Marvel cosmic hierarchy and where he sort of fits in terms of villains that they've done so far. Obviously much more powerful than Thanos. But I know I mentioned that Doctor Strange 2 is connected to Spider-Man 3. Doctor Strange is going to be a big character during Spider-Man 3 No Way Home. And it sounds like Sony is actually getting ready to release that first trailer. That might happen in the next couple of weeks. If it does, of course I'll do a video whenever they do release it. My Marvel Loki episodes will start posting in a couple weeks, so make sure you have alerts enabled so you don't miss any of that. I will name a new giveaway winner when I post my next Marvel video. Everyone click here for my brand new Marvel Eternals trailer breakdown and Easter eggs and click here for my Venom 2 trailer, Let There Be Carnage. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. I'll see you guys tonight.